Hi all, welcome to another session. In this video, we are going to discuss about first aid. First aid is a very important topic for both the lay people and also the emergency medical technicians who will be going on the field. I am Dr. Prakash Babu, Associate Professor of Emergency Medicine. So what is the definition of first aid? First aid is any help given to sick or injured until a full medical support is available for them or provision of initial care during any illness or injury which is sudden in onset before the medical help can arrive and treat them. So what are the goals of first aid? The goals of first aid include preservation of the life. First of all, if a patient is severely ill or is about to die, we need to preserve the life prevent any further injury or further damage by controlling the disease process and promote recovery. Whenever in a disease, if you intervene early, there are high chances of recovery when the patient reaches the hospital. So this is a first aid kit. First aid kit contains some electrolyte solutions, so some band-aids, basic medications like paracetamol for pain relief and also for fever, band-aids for minor injuries, there will be some tweezers, thermometer, first aid guide and some neosporin for superficial injuries. Also there will be a suction captive and also there will be alcohol swabs. So what are the PPE that a first aid provider should use? PPE means personal protective equipment which a person should wear to prevent any exposure to diseases or self-harm. So mainly gloves should be worn for protection of the help of hands, dressings of cloth that can be put on wounds to stop bleeding, bandages of gauge or cloth which hold dressings tightly over the wounds, rolls of tape to hold on dressings and bandages, scissors that can be used to cut the tape to open clothing and to make more bandages and dressings. CPR masks or barrier masks or pocket masks to make it sanitary for a helper to breathe into someone's mouth when there is a cardiac arrest and you are going to be a CPR. There will be a blanket made of cloth are also called mylar cloth called space blanket to cover the sick or the hurt person to keep them warm to lessen the chances of their exposure to harmful environmental conditions. There will be a first aid guide, adhesive strips will be there, antiseptic creams for small wounds, tweezers to remove any stringers, splinters and thorns. So now we will get into one by one the major illnesses that a first aid provider can help. Most of them is asphyxia or obstruction of air passages. Asphyxia can be sudden when a person is eating he can have an asphyxia, obstruction of a foreign body. So what are the symptoms of this obstruction to the air passages, which is called foreign body airway? The symptoms include a profuse sudden onset of cough. There will be less oxygen which is supplied to the brain. So the patient will discolor into blue called cyanosis that can be seen over the face, especially the tip of the nose, the tongue and the lips. The patient will be gasping for breath he might be unable to speak and over a period of time, he might become unconscious. So when it happens, when can a choking or foreign body aspiration can happen? It can happen while eating in a normal person. If the person is swallowing and talking at the same time, there is high chances of the foreign body getting aspirated into the trachea and getting and blocking the airways. It happens semi-conscious patients, especially alcoholic patients who are eating meat, the meat ball can go and obstruct the trachea. Small children who usually put whatever they get into the hands like coins, marbles in their mouth, they can aspirate them into the trachea. If unconscious patient vomits, the contents can go and block the windpipe. So what are you going to do when you see a patient? As I told the symptoms, if you look at the symptoms, you know the, the person is choking, 
and there is a sign called universal sign of choking wherein the patient holds his neck with both the arms and suddenly either coughing or gasping for breath the person is already coughing that means there is a partial obstruction to the airway there is still some air entering into the lungs encourage him to cough more vigorously so that the foreign body expelled forcibly out the cough is weak our patient is not able to cough wherein it indicates a complete obstruction and if the patient is still maintaining his posture not not become unconscious until now we can use something called as hemlich maneuver which will come to it, to it a little later if the patient is unconscious and his patient are unable to maintain posture start cpr as per the call for the bls guidelines so this is the picture of hemlich guideline hemlich maneuver we go behind the patient slightly bend the patient forward so that his head is slightly downwards and then go behind the patient make a fist with your dominant hand and hold it in the epigastric region that is just below the sternal bone sternal bone is the midline bone below that you have to make your fist and with the other hand encircle the patient and with the other hand hold your fist and then suddenly give a blow backwards and upwards a forcible blow keep repeating that until a foreign body is expelled and the patient becomes unconscious the foreign body is expelled the patient will be able to breathe normally and he will be able to talk or if the patient becomes unconscious you have to make him flat and start cpr as per bls protocol suppose if you are dealing with a child wherein your fist is too large what do you do you kneel behind the patient make them bend forward slightly and use your forearm with your forearm just below the rib cage you encircle with the other hand you hold your wrist and then you similar upward and backward thrust all of a sudden so what is the principle behind this hemlich maneuver hemlich maneuver works by yes lungs are filled with gas or air when you suddenly thrust over the chest and the abdomen there is sudden increase in intrathoracic pressure with the in increase in intrathoracic pressure whatever air that is contained in within the lungs tries to come out forcibly along with that force the foreign body can be expelled that is the principle behind doing a hemlich maneuver if you are dealing with a infant instead of hemlich maneuver you will do something called as bag blows and chest press kneel on a chair make the baby in your lap first you will be giving bag blows lay the baby face down on your forearm using heel of one hand you form bag blows between the shoulder blades and then you will turn over the baby and give chest press lay the baby face down on the fo forearm place two fingers in the center of the baby's chest and compress the breast bone at least 1.5 inches five times repeat the process until the foreign body is expelled or the baby becomes unconscious the baby becomes unconscious we will start cpr as per pediatric bls protocols the next most important injury that can happen is bites and stings this is very common The symptoms include there will be a wound at the bite site, swelling, pain, and sometimes bleeding can be there. You have to cleanse the wound with soap and water to remove any toxic material from the wound. Apply iodine-containing antiseptic solution so that you prevent any secondary infections. Apply ice or cortisone ointment for infected stings. Try and find sting. and remove by scraping the skin instead of using tweezers to remove the stings take a hot cardboard scrape across the skin to remove the stinger next important thing is snake bites symptoms include fang marks there can be swelling of the skin and skin discoloration can be there patient may complain of giddiness vomiting blurring of vision double vision weakness in neurological anomalies excessive bleeding from gum site gum bleed blood in the urine in hematological anomalies 
so indian snakes mainly the big four what are the big four yes cobra crate brussels viper the sascaled viper out of them cobra is pure neurological it doesn't cause any hematological manifestations south indian cobra and south indian brussels viper south indian crate and south indian brussels viper can cause both hemotoxic and neurotoxic manifestations and the sascaled viper is purely hemotoxic manifestations so what do you do you reassure the patient what do you tell when you reassure the patient yes you need to tell that the venom is going to take some time to act no need to fear there is anti venom available and the patient can be treated do not move the patient don't allow them to walk or run or anything you need to carry the patient apply a tourniquet tourniquet should be applied just as to insinuate a finger in between just above the wound it should be tight enough to obstruct the lymphatic flow but loose enough to allow blood flow normally to prevent edema when you apply a tourniquet every 10 minutes you have to remove loosen the tourniquet and reapply the tourniquet you have to immobilize the limb just like how you do for splinting you have to immobilize the limb one joint below and one joint above has to be immobilized clean the wound and apply ice to reduce pain and reduce any secondary infections and take the patient to the nearest hospital as early as possible burns very common in houses burns can happen due to chemicals fabric burning or electricity falling of hot liquids over the person which is called scalds symptoms include pain blistering charring and main complication is dehydration management first step is stop the burning process this can be done by cleaning up the chemicals turning off the electricity cooling heat with running water covering up or taking the person inside out of the sun to prevent any complications so burns can be graded first degree or superficial burns which can be treated at home itself without going to any hospital the burn only affects outer layer of the skin causes swelling and some redness which can be treated by antiseptic solutions provided in the first aid kit second degree are deep dermal bleeds affects top two layers of the skin this causes extensive swelling extensive redness and may cause blisters also third degree are deep burns affects the subcutaneous tissues causes white or charred or numb skin second degree burns over face genitalia and the sensitive areas and the third degree burns are called major burns all major burns patients should be taken to a hospital for further management flush the burned area with cool running water for several minutes do not use ice apply light gauze bandage if the burn is minor you can put an ointment like aloe vera ointment before you cover it pain relief by paracetamol or ibuprofen will work do not break any blisters that form transport all burns patient to the nearest hospital joining and near drowning maintain breathing artificially keep the patient in recovery position start cpr if the patient is unresponsive fainting which is very very common symptoms include sudden loss of consciousness the patient will look pale there will be rapid pulse or tachycardia will be there cold skin especially the peripheries patient might be sweating also treatment includes leave the victim lying down on the floor do not try to make him sit or stand immediately again he will fall down and there will be more injuries loosen any tight clothes roll the victim to the side and wipe out of the mouth any secretions in the event of vomiting fractures or joint injuries happen especially due to trauma more common in children when they fall during playing symptoms are pain or tenderness deformity of the bones swelling and discoloration treatment includes prevent movement of the injured parts until splint is applied treat for any shock if present give oral fluids Clean the entire limb before moving. For sprains, elevate the affected part and apply cold compresses. Elastic bandages may be used for immobilization. Heat exhaustion. Symptoms include 
pale clammy skin profuse perspiration weakness headache and possibly cramps treatment includes rest cool atmosphere with fan cool water by mouth heat stroke a more serious form of heat injury wherein the patient will have high temperatures hot dry skin rapid pulse possibly unconscious heat stroke usually occurs in hot environments so the person is working without taking any liquids without rehydrating himself heat stroke can occur you need to immediately stop the patient from working take him to the shade or a room with a fan immediately undress the victim sponge with or immerse in cooled water wrap in water soaked sheets use fan or air conditioner so that his body temperature comes down rehydrate and then transport to the hospital poisoning sometimes the patient might tell you that the patient has consumed some poison and he is worried he can vomit but there are some telltale signs which tell you that the patient might have consumed a poison in the given context information from the victim or the observer who has seen stains about the mouth because it's a poison the patient knows it's not going to taste well so he will have hazily poured into his mouth hazily swallowed there will be stains around the mouth presence of a poison container if the patient is unconscious and lying in a place the poison container is present in that area it indicates poisoning patient a peculiar odor in the breath can also tell that the patient has consumed some poisonous substance treatment dilute the ingested poison by administering water or milk do not induce vomiting this is very very dangerous practice usually done in villages in india when a poison victim is there people used to make the victim drink more more salty water and induce vomiting it can increase the damage if the patient is semi conscious or becoming unconscious it can there can be aspiration which is very very dangerous than the poison keep the patient in recovery position and transport to the nearest hospital as early as possible severe bleeding apply pressure over the wound with a bad of sterile gauze or other clean material if the bleeding continues after a pressure is applied and no fracture is present elevate the wound if bleeding still continues apply pressure to the blood vessels leading to the area especially in arm just below the armpit in the legs press against the groin where the thigh and the trunk join use a tourniquet even if the blood bleeding is continuing of even after pressure applied against the arm electric shock separate the victim from the source without touching directly so scene safety is the first step whenever you approach any victim reassure the patient that nothing is going to happen keep him lying on the floor so that he will not faint or any neurological manifestations will not develop you enough oral fluids cpr if the patient is unresponsive so i think i have covered almost all the major disorders that can occur in the pre hospital and where a first aid can save the lives of the victims If you have any doubt, you can post me in the inbox or directly message me. Keep looking at this channel for further videos. Thank you. Thank you so much.